Hey guys, what's up? This is a 20 core, 40 thread Intel Xeon Gold 6138. This Xeon CPU for the socket LGA3647 from Intel is kind of a beast. This CPU is meant for the most crucial of applications, the most essential of workloads, the most powerful, and the most insane of- And I'm gonna play games on it. Why am I gonna play games on this CPU? Well, because I paid for it and you can't stop me. So in today's video, I'm going to be pairing this insane CPU with some pretty awesome stuff. First off, we have the motherboard that is going with the CPU. As I mentioned in a previous video, this is the EPC621D8A from Azeroc Rack. This is a pretty decked out server board with uh, basically all the features you'd want for any uh, high-end gaming PC. As you see, we've got six blue memory slots on this motherboard. The white one, I don't know what it's for and I never will, but this CPU supports six channel memory. Now to populate those six DIMM slots, we have these very experimental and very expensive DDR4 DIMMs. Now this is a 192 gigabyte DDR4 kit, which I'm going to uh, populate this motherboard with. And I'm going to do that now because everyone loves some RAM installation porn. Cooling this absolute behemoth of a CPU, we have this pretty dense heatsink from Noctua. I don't know the name for it off the top of my head, but I will leave a link to it in the description as well as the uh, consumer grade version of the same exact heatsink that has two by 92 millimeter fans. So it's a dense boyo, but it doesn't actually take up a ton of space. So that is awesome. I do want to thank Noctua real quick for actually sending me this cooler for this testing as uh, out of the parts I have just named, it's the only one I didn't have to pay a lot of money for. Now, as you can see, I haven't actually fully set up a system because the CPU's still out, and that's because I've already done all the testing for this like a month ago. I've just only now gotten around to recording the video, and the more more times I reinsert the CPU, the more likely I am to mangle this $600 plus dollar motherboard. So I'm going to just uh, use the benchmarks that I've already recorded and save the CPU installation for the build that I have planned coming soon. Stay subscribed for that, or don't because it doesn't matter. YouTube's not going to recommend my content because it sucks. But let's get into the benchmarks of this CPU in video games. So I started off by pairing it with a GTX 1060 because it was the only graphics card I had sitting around and I am broke so I don't have any other ones. But uh, in some of my later benchmarks, I kind of just replaced it with a Titan XP that I also had laying around because I'm stupid and forgot about it. All right, starting off with Black Ops Cold War to get right into the more demanding games and actually our GTX 1060 is most likely the bottleneck here, but I can almost guarantee that the performance difference between this card and, and like a Titan XP using this CPU is going to be very little. As you can see, we are rocking a solid 60 plus FPS, even getting to the 70s at a lot of points in the map, and that is freaking awesome. Again, this is a CPU that is literally designed for anything but gaming. This CPU was designed with gaming completely out of mind. It literally is not supposed to be in a gaming system. And I doubt any other person on the freaking planet is ever going to game with this exact CPU. Mostly because Intel made like 600 of the same damn CPU and just named it 40,000 different things with different metal names. But if you're expecting the Xeon to not be able to game at all, you were wrong because this thing can actually run a Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War rather okay. Even in Zombies, which I played the stupid new Outbreak mode or whatever it is, it was new when I did the benchmarks, and uh, it actually also runs pretty damn well, forcing the GTX 1060 to be uh, at 100% uses at most points, so that's awesome. Uh, besides that, let's move on to our next game. Rainbow Six Pay to Win, Rainbow Six Siege, that's the game. So, moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, we can actually see a solid 200 plus FPS with our GTX Titan XP that we've switched to actually almost reaching 100% uses at some points. And that's with our CPU only boosting to around its 2.9 advertised all core boost clock. So that is pretty freaking nice. But yeah, this is uh, towards the top end of the settings again. You can, you can actually see our graphics cards almost maxed out and we're actually getting a solid 200 FPS, which is, Really awesome considering you can spend three times the money to get the same performance as a CPU that came out four years ago. So I thought that was really awesome. But 200 plus FPS on Rainbow Six Siege as I'm running around with a pistol like a freaking moron, but hey, it's better than the gun that this guy gets because the game sucks. So uh, I'm actually very happy with the performance. We can actually see upwards of 250 FPS at some parts of the map, only dipping below 200, but if I was using a high refresh rate display, which I was, 
uh, we would see above 144 FPS at all times, so that's pretty freaking amazing. Again, considering that this CPU is not for gaming. I have to keep telling you that this CPU is not for gaming, or Intel will come to my house and beat up my dog. So, moving on to our next game. Wanted to quickly brush by CSGO, uh, a more CPU bottlenecked game, and uh, we can actually see upwards of 300 FPS, um, but mostly hovering around the 150 to 200 range, again, on a high refresh rate display. That is absolutely fine, and CSGO is, uh, again, <laughs> really awesome uh, that it can run this, uh, again, being like a single multi, like, two core utilization game, so good job CSGO and uh, good job Xeon. Uh, moving on. Hitman, a game with a lot of different logic because a lot of NPCs and uh, actually similar situation. 60 plus FPS at all times, even during the points where I am uh, getting rid of witnesses. That's the word I was looking for. Yes, no witnesses. Yes, that's the goal of the game. No witnesses, right? You can't be spotted if everyone's dead. Stealth. And uh, we can see upwards of 60, 70, 80 FPS even, so uh, I'm gonna call this a pass. Moving on to the next game. Same reason I picked Hitman 2, we're moving on to Star Wars Battlefront 2, a game with a lot of NPCs doing a lot of different things, aka CPU intensive. And as we can see, we are <laughs> getting upwards of 100 FPS at some point, but for the most part, we're averaging around 80 to 90, which is still pretty impressive. This is a game that came out around when the CPU came out, so this is, you know, kind of the performance you could expect if you had uh, 3,000 US dollars at the time that the CPU came out and, uh, and didn't understand that 20 cores, 40 threads is completely useless for gaming, especially when the clock speed is that of a 2012 i7. So we're gonna finally move on to Grand Theft Auto 5 for our last game. Now the reason I'm playing Grand Theft Auto 5 is because much like the Queen of England, it just won't freaking die. But unlike the Queen of England, it's actually kind of useful. So playing some Grand Theft Auto 5, which is actually pretty good on older CPUs, uh, even though it's a very kind of intensive game and a pretty looking game, even though it is, you know, came out in like 2013, 2015 on PC, uh, we can actually see at some points, 200 FPS, but for the most part, 150 plus FPS, which is really awesome for Grand Theft Auto V on a CPU like this. So if you're working in a data center and you're really bored and you've got really fast internet, you can quickly download Grand Theft Auto V in a couple minutes, play it for a few hours, and then before you get caught, uninstall it and do the same thing again. So, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed my testing of this behemoth of a CPU. This is the Intel Xeon Gold 6138, in case you forgot in the 10 minutes of me rambling about bullshit. Now, the actual results of the CPU may vary from what I got here, because this is an engineering sample, although it is a qualifying sample engineering sample, so it qualifies to have the same clock speed as the release for, I don't, I don't get it. CPU naming doesn't make sense to me like most things, but that's, that's the point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed. Please leave a like so I can feed my starving kids. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.